Hi, English 9, Hetzel here. Uh, welcome to Unit 7. Uh, unit 7 is our Romeo and Juliet unit. We will be using Edgenuity along with some Schoology assignments uh, to complete this unit, and I am super excited. So, Romeo and Juliet is one of my favorite plays um, of Shakespeare's to study, to teach, um, to read. Um, it's it's so funny because it's it's such a different world than ours, but yet there are so many similarities. A um, couple of things that I just want to really point out. Yes, the language might be difficult to read for you. Um, yes, it's different than how we speak today. But when, once you realize that the characters um, are speaking of the same kinds of things that we talk about today, it makes it much easier to understand what's going on. Um, so in Romeo and Juliet, we have 13-year-olds, uh, Romeo and Juliet. So guys, these are kids younger than you um, that are going to fall in love over a course of three days. Uh, over the course of one week, everything will be done in the entire place. So just really keep that in mind in, in time frames and in sarcasm, in making fun of this play because it's hysterical. It's so um, distant from where we are today, yet the concepts of um, young love and friendship and partying and drugs and sex and all of that crazy part of Shakespearean culture, all of those things still exist today. Um, so I want you to think about, yes, we're reading Romeo and Juliet. Yes, it's from a very long time ago. However, the concepts are still very much the same. Um, conversations between parents and children. Uh, parents are still trying to guide their children to what they consider the proper life. Um, friends are still talking about who they like and what they want to do on the weekends. And um, they party, they, they do drugs, they have different um, things that they like to do for fun, just like we all do. Um, and so I want you to understand that, yes, while this was written in the 1500s, um, there is still benefit and, um, and things to learn from this story. Uh, so let's see, what else am I forgetting? Oh, and the fact that your brain is a muscle. Um, I want it to be hard. Working in school should be a little bit hard because your brain is a muscle. And if we want to uh, reach your full potential, then we need to be working out your brain. So yes, it's going to be a little bit difficult, um, but it's also going to be really, really funny. Because one thing I don't think you guys understand is that Shakespeare, shh, he's a dirty birdie. He's very dirty. He's naughty. He likes to talk about sex and he likes to make funny jokes about sex. Uh, and so, and just funny jokes about all different situations. But uh, Shakespeare had a dirty personality. So when you're reading, if you're like, whoa, that sounded dirty, it probably was meant to be dirty. Um, so when we start going through the text and whatnot, if you have questions about euphemisms, uh, and again, a euphemism, which is defined down here at the very, very bottom, is a mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one uh, considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing. Uh, so for example, in the very first part of Romeo and Juliet, you're gonna see some of, um, I wanna say Capulet or Monty, I think it's Capulet's men, just playing around with their swords and one of them calls his sword a limp fish. Yes, he is talking about uh, bodily parts there. Um, and so you have to read through the lines. You have to look at, well, are we talking about something that could be considered dirty or inappropriate in that time frame? And if so, think about um, what kind of jokes could be made about it that would take something dirty and embarrassing uh, and turn it into something funny and and maybe a little less understood by people. Because remember, in Shakespeare's day and age, not everyone could read. Not everyone had the ability to understand euphemisms. Uh, and so it was Shakespeare's way of making funny jokes and stuff without maybe necessarily um, insulting those that were at his place. Uh, so you had to be smart enough to understand them. So look for them because they are everywhere. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about just about getting started with this unit? Uh, it will be in Edgenuity. 
Uh, and you will be doing two sessions a week in Edgenuity, except for our last week, and that's when you will be doing your big unit test. Um, there will be some journaling uh, just for you to help kind of connect with, this, with the poem, or I'm sorry, with the, with the play. Uh, and really just kind of thinking about, again, Romeo and Juliet are 13 year olds that fall in love and get married within three days and die within a week. Okay, so I just want you to be aware of there is some really funny um, things to be expecting from this play because while we all know the story of Romeo and Juliet, I think we miss some of the big details. And so to go have the chance with you guys to go over uh, and and tell you why it's so funny and to point out um, the euphemisms and um, the skill that Shakespeare had for his time frame, not to mention that he was writing in complete iambic pentameter, which is five stressed syllables and five unstressed syllables all in one line. That's crazy. So these the expectations of Shakespeare, I mean, while yes, it's difficult and, um, and sounds funny, you have to look between those lines and see, okay, it sounds funny because, well, it's been 500 years since this was written. Um, we have to look at the changes in society and that, you know, our society, we have so many options for entertainment. And in Shakespeare's times, it was really only the plays. Uh, and so uh, looking at our two societies back to back and side to side, I just really want you to understand why this play is, one, so hysterical to me um, because of just 13 year olds falling in love and getting married and then killing themselves within a week. Um, but also just the lines are funny and Shakespeare's sense of humor is funny. And so I want you to be prepared for that. And if you have any questions or problems or concerns, please let me know. As always, I'm willing to work with each of you. Um, other than that, guys, enjoy your first week with Romeo and Juliet. And I will check in soon. Take care, English 9. Love you lots. Let me know if you need anything.